I didn't expect to see y'all here with the rain pouring down, but we have a break in the weather. So welcome to the people here in online viewing. We are so glad you've joined us. Please sign in on the attendance pads located in the pew and pass it down. We would like to specifically welcome any visitors, and if you wouldn't mind filling out the form right here. And on the back side, prayer requests. If you have a person to add, feel free to place their name in the offering plate. We believe in the mighty power of prayer. Amen? Amen. The men's club will meet on Tuesday, February 13th at the 6.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Seva's ministry will meet in the drama room. The CDC board meeting will meet on February 13th in seven, at 7 o'clock in the choir room. We have three different meetings going on. Note, with you, if you get confused, ask me. So, Super Bowl Sunday, who is going to win? I heard Chiefs. Is anybody pulling for the 49ers? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. So, who do you think wins in our can contest and money contest? Evie was counting last night, and she thinks this chief is gonna, Chiefs is going to win. You can find out next week. You can find out who wins the cans and who wins the monies next week. We will announce it very well. So, we will give each CDC family these lint boxes. I don't know if y'all saw them. And our church family will get them as well. They go through all, all seven weeks of Lent. And so there's prayer things in there. Um, so we have a lot of announcements. Our Ash Wednesday service is going to be at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. What time is it going to be? Hey! So Wednesday night is Ash Wednesday. Well, all day is Ash Wednesday, for that matter. So please be here. It's 6 o'clock, and God creates wonders out of dust. God creates wonders out of dust. We'll be starting our Good Enough book study on Thursday at 10 a.m., and our Good Enough Litton worship series starts next Sunday it's uh, based on, the worship series is based on Kate Bowler's book, um, and our Lent study will be on Kate Bowler's book. So the children and youth will be doing a joint bowling outing on February 25th, and that's all the announcements I have time for. 10.06. Oh. Oh. Dear Lord, we come before you, sometimes scattered, sometimes open to hear your word. Make us all open to hear whatever you have to tell us today. If it ever who have to, to tell us this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand and sing, I Stand Amazed in the Presence, number 371.
Amen. Please, oh, oh, I remember this week. Please continue standing for our call to worship. <laughs> Beyond our busyness, there is glory rising, born of heaven and reaching out to each of us. Jesus meets us here, raising us from depths of the valley to the height of the mountain, carrying the weight of our humanity to the heights of heaven's glory. Please continue standing as we say our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Can be seated, but the choir can't. Woohoo! <laughs> Some can.
Amen. So you know what time it is. Where we breathe in the Holy Spirit. We breathe in the Holy Spirit. And without all that distracts us. Breathe in the Holy Spirit. And out whatever keeps us from focusing on God and God alone. Oh Lord, you are going to trouble the waters. You're going to trouble the waters to make us grow. To help us persevere. Help strengthen us for endurance. Help us. To do your will always, everywhere. Help us be tenacious in our spreading of the gospel. Help us have audacity in sharing your good news. We have many people that are sick. Please heal them and make them well. Because you, our Lord, are a great physician. Please draw close to them Heal them. Mend their bodies together as you know how to do. Make a way for them when there seems like there's no way to be found. And heal them, O oh, precious Lord. If any among us are grieving, draw close to them. As you say in your word, you draw close to the brokenhearted. Be with them in their grief comfort them give them peace that transcends all understanding because we know that you bring true peace ultimate peace peace that lasts not as the world gives but peace that is transcendent of all circumstances bring us your peace and your comfort if any among us are discerning situations Give them the right way. Show them the right way to go. Lead them on right paths. Because we look to you for our direction. We look to you for our being. If we humble ourselves and center ourselves on you and your leading and your word, we have a firm foundation that is not going to be taken away by the silly world's whims. If we look to you and center ourselves on you, it's all going to be okay. Because God is still on the throne. Jesus is still Lord, and the Holy Spirit is working ever in our midst. God is still on the throne. Jesus is still Lord. The Holy Spirit is ever working in our midst. Help us remember that and take it with us in the world. No matter what may befall, no matter what circumstances we're in, no matter where we are, help us to take that to heart. You bring love. You bring the good news of redemption. We love you. We thank you. We pray now for the world and our community and the tragedies in our community and around the world. We know that you draw near to them in the darkest nights and the darkest valleys. You bring hope. Now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against you. Temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever.
Amen. Now we give back to God what God has graciously given to us by our tithes and by our offerings. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for receiving these, our gifts. Please bless the givers. Please bless those who couldn't give. Please bless us all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So please be seated, and would the children come forward for our children's sermon? So I'm going to ask... Whoa. Oh. I'm going to ask y'all to come with me. See that ladybug? It was crawling on the tapestry when I walked up here, and it was crawling over that. See it, ladybug? That always reminds me of my grandmother. She had ladybugs all in her house, and she said, remember me when you see a ladybug. Yeah? Ladybug? Okay, back to the regular scheduled program. <laughs> and that was a strat to me during the prayer. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Okay, so. That's a good eye. It's, hey. I was looking at, at it from the offering plate. I'm like, oh. Okay, so what is this? Bleach. Bleach. Yeah? So what am I doing with bleach? So his appearance changed from the inside out. They're talking about Jesus. They're talking about Jesus. His appearance changed from the inside out. Right before their eyes, his clothes shimmered glistening white, whiter than any bleach could make them. 
Elijah, along with Moses, came into view in deep conversation with Jesus. So, we're celebrating Transfiguration Day. And it's hard to understand as kids. However, this is an easy from the message version. Remember that Jesus was dazzling white, dazzling white whiter than bleach can make him, him. So he's showing the disciples who got used to him talking and telling stories and be, like eating fish with them and cutting up with them. His humanity, he being human, but he's reminding them that he is divine. He is reminding them that he is not of this world. Okay? So Segue. I'll put out the candy. So these lint boxes that you're gonna get. Ooh, ooh. Well, are full of week one prayers. Week two. coloring sheets, week three, meditation jars, and so you have a jar and glitter glue, and you can do it yourself, and so remember our Easter egg hunt and VBS, and all this stuff is in your box. However, you're not going to children's church, Evie help because Miss Debbie is sick, and Miss Catherine is sick, and so you're going to do these coloring sheets, and my wonderful assistant, Evie, <laughs> so you're gonna grab pretzels and a crayon pack, Okay, pretzels in a crayon pack. And you're gonna stay in here for a real church. I mean, not just children's church, but. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You're going to get squashed right now? Yeah, lots okay, of Okay, so. And there's going to be a prize for you afterwards. You're going to show your pictures to the congregation after I finish my sermon. Okay? Oh, cool. Okay? And so you will make your pictures any way you want. Any way you want. And... You're going to come back up after the end of the service, at the end of the sermon, and show the pictures, and you will get a prize. Okay? Okay. Remember bleach. Jesus showed them your, their, Jesus showed them all his divinity, his being holy. Okay? Yeah? Okay. Dear Lord, Thank you for being holy and human. You're our Emmanuel. Come to the earth. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And remember that staying in the lines is so overrated. Yes, it's so overrated. Oh, you I forgot to give you the candy. Oh, oh, oh. Um, should we stay here and do it? More loot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, no. Natalie says no. Okay. Go back to your seats, huh? Okay.
Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Can you say thank you? No problem. Okay. Now that we've taken care of all of that, we sing. Still away to Jesus. Please stand and sing. <laughs> I love to do these black spirituals, not just in February, but sprinkled throughout the year, because something about them tugs at the heart, tugs at your very core. And so we sing them because we mean them, and they mean more to us. God's a proud parent in the lectionary text today. We hear his great booming James Earl Jones voice at Jesus' baptism and today at his transfiguration. It's not transforming a mouse into a goblet. It's Jesus, God with us, our Emmanuel, showing his three closest friends all of him, both of his divinity and holiness and his humanity and humanness. This story happened six days after Jesus, who... Ask, who do the people say I am? Who do people say I am? Mark eight twenty eight through 29. And they answered him, John the Baptist and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. You are the Messiah. And Matthew, Jesus blesses him and says, you, Peter, are the rock on whom I'm going to build my church. Immediately before this passage, he tells the disciples, his friends, and followers what following him actually means. He told them about how he would endure great suffering that would lead to his death and resurrection. 
Peter tried to call him out on it, and that's where he said in verse 33, Get behind me, Satan. You must have heard that. We use it rather frequently, but this is where it is. Verse 33, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Parahuman divine. In verse 34 through 38, he called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any wish to come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their crosses and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my, of my words and in their adulterous and sinful generation, of this the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in glory of the Father with the holy angels. He says these crazy revolutionary riddles and parables with not just merely an earthly authority like any old rabbi, but with real divine authority. This is the lead up to the transfiguration. I want you to see the lead up to the transfiguration. This is the lead up to what Peter, James, and John saw and heard. In fact, the message version says of the Bible says, six days later, three of them did see it. Mark 9 through 2 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and let them up a high mountain apart by themselves. He was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling bright, such as no one on earth could brighten them. And there appeared to them Elijah and with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us set up three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud they, there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved, listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. When we see something with our own eyes and hear it with our own ears, it makes us a first person witness or an eyewitness. They saw Jesus transfigured before them and were terrified as Elijah and Moses appeared like specters. Then Peter started running off of the mouth because that's what you do when you don't know what to do or can't believe your eyes. Can you imagine? What do you think God's booming voice sounds like? It's not in this version, it's not in this gospel, how loud it was. But what do you think? The triune God always has ways of getting our attention. Peter was babbling about setting up tents when suddenly a cloud overshadowed them. Did he notice the cloud and all of us nervous yammering? Peter, James, and John certainly heard the voice. One of my favorite movies is the movie Field of Dreams. Hey, Annie! 
Penny, what was that? What was what? That voice just now. What was it? We didn't hear anything. All right. If you build it, he will come. Okay, you must have heard that. Sorry. Hey, come on in to dinner. Let's go, Parker. I accidentally looked up who the real vo voice is. It's Ed Harris. Ed Harris. What? So, back to the real story, Kevin Costner plays Ray Kinsella, who gets a second clearer vision showing a baseball field and notoriously plowed under his corn crop to put a baseball field smack dab in the middle of nowhere, Iowa, just because he heard a voice. He was just going about his business, checking on the corn crop, when he heard a little bit louder than a voice, a little bit louder than a whisper. He doesn't ignore the voice. He doesn't tell the voice to call back later. He doesn't tell the voice he's got the wrong guy or gal. He listens, he listens and that sets him on a course that not only brings redemption for him, but others along the way too. If you haven't seen the movie, watch it. Did we hear God's, do, do we hear God's voice? Do we hear God's voice? It may not be loud, it may be in our hearts. Do we listen to Jesus? Do we listen to the voice in our hearts? Do we listen to the barely audible whisper? Are we too busy running here, there, and everywhere? Ray was at least in tune enough to ask the voice to repeat itself. But are, are we even that in tune? We have to first humble ourselves and we need to get centered and then, only then, can we fully listen to Jesus. Humble ourselves. We need to understand something critical. God is God, and we are not. Amen? There's an old camp song, Humble thyself in the eyes of the Lord. Humble thyself in the eyes of the Lord, and he will lift you up higher and higher, and he will lift you up. This comes from James 4.10. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. This coming at Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, where we acknowledge our own mortality. Jesus, Genesis 3, 19, By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We don't want to get big head syndrome, BHS, and rely on our own energy and power. We want to rely on God's strength. Otherwise, pride goeth before the fall. Whew, we have many examples in our life for that. Parker Palmer, a writer and theologian, writes in Weavings, I had read somewhere that humility is central to the spiritual life, which seemed like a good idea to me. I was proud to think of myself as humble. I was proud to think of myself as humble. What I did not know is that for some of us, the path to humility goes through humiliation, being brought low, unable to function, stripped of pretenses and defenses, feeling fraudulent, empty, useless, that allows us to regrow our lives from the humus, hummus of common ground, the humility of common ground. The spiritual journey is full of paradoxes, and one of them is that the humiliation that brings us down, down to the ground on which it is safe to stand and to fall, eventually takes us to a firmer, fuller sense of self. When people ask me how it felt to emerge from depression, I can only give one answer. I felt at home in my skin and at home on the face of the earth for the first time. I felt at home in my own skin and at home on the face of the earth for the first time. 1 Peter 5, 5 through 9 says it this way. All of you must clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another, for God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. 
Discipline yourselves. Keep alert like a roaring adversary, roaring lion. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. We've all got stuff. Stuff. We've all got problems. We can't give in to the enemy putting doubts and fears in our heads or a laundry list of worries that rolls around in our head when we can't sleep at night. We have to breathe. Cast all of our anxieties on Jesus and center ourselves in the triune God. Get centered. Get centered. What do I mean by get centered? One of my grammar teacher's pet peeves was the phrase centered around. You can't be centered around. How can a thing be centered around something? You must be at the center, the exact center. I think we go through life ho-humming around things, but if we just had Jesus at our center, at our core, that's where our strength lies. Richard Rohr, American priest and author, writes in The Balancing Point, about Archimedes, a Greek philosopher and mathematician, who noticed that if a lever was placed in the correct place on the correct fulcrum, it could move proportionally much greater weight than the force applied. You've seen the fulcrum. Archimedes imagined a fixed point, the fulcrum in space. If the earth rested on the short end of a lever close to the fulcrum, Archimedes was pulling down to the extremely long end of the lever, then theoretically his small weight will be multiplied enough to move the world. I almost did a children's sermon on the lever. Hey, but the fixed point is our place to stand. It is a contemplative stance, ready, steady, centered, poised, and rooted. It's like you're fighting someone. It's like you're boxing someone. Ready, steady, rooted. To be contemplative, we have to be a slight distance from the world. We have to allow time for withdrawal from business as usual, for meditation, for going into what Jesus calls our private room in Matthew 6, 6, our prayer closet by ourselves. However, in order to this not to become escapism, we have to remain quite close to the world at the same time, loving it, feeling its pain and its joy and our pains and our joy. So the fulcrum, the balancing point, must be in the real world, must be in the real world. Jesus calls us to be the, in the real world. We're called to be in the world, not in our ivory towers. We're called to be in the nitty gritty, the mess of the world, and we're not supposed to be of it. That's very difficult. In John seventeen fifteen, Jesus was asking God to protect us. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. Jesus is asking God for our protection from the things of this world, the anger, the depression, the apathy, the angst, the root of bitterness, the rampant doubt and fear. We have a bubble of protection if we center ourselves on Christ, if we remember to do that. And the road rage of traffic, whew, on wood your throat, mm, 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 mm. We live in the shadow of the Almighty when we breathe in and out Jesus, when we are stressed, tired, and frantic. I know that I sound like Susie Sunshine, and it's real hard to practice what I preach these days. That's why these Lent boxes are so important, and there's so many prayers in them. I'm reminded of the breath prayers, the nature prayers, the the nature prayer has a ladybug. I'm reminded of the prayers that we say coming and going. I mean, the breath prayers, if I remember them, I would say them all the time. I'm just kidding. But centering ourselves in prayer helps us react differently to the world. Centering ourselves on Jesus helps us to react differently to the world. If I don't center myself on Jesus, I may say a not nice thing to Enoch and Evie, a not nice thing to my husband, 
a not nice thing, not nice thing to the person that cuts me off in traffic, a not nice thing to the pickup line and the drop off line. That is the bane of my existence. Whew. Mm. We all need prayer. Amen? These are just creative ways. This box is just creative ways to get your prayers flowing. When we pray, we get centered and we can tune into Christ, to our leading, to Christ's leading in our lives. Fully listen. I could say we have two ears and one mouth. We should listen more than we should speak. We all know that. But it's more than that. Chris Hagen, listening with the whole heart, right some years ago i came across a card that said when your heart speaks take good notes when your heart speaks take good notes classical christian writings on the spiritual disciplines of discernment would confirm that advice the new testament heart the greek word for cardia refers to the very center of our physical and spiritual life including thinking emotion desire will and moral decision to listen with the ear of your heart means to notice that God may be seeking to reveal to you through all your senses and awareness. All of your senses, seeing and hearing and so much more. For your listening takes your whole body, all of you, your very essence, your heart. Listening to Jesus say you're loved, your sins are forgiven, my grace covers you, you are fearfully and wonderfully made for a purpose, you are worthy, you are enough. We're going to be talking about that in the next seven weeks. You are enough. Let it fully awaken your heart and let the peace go with you as you face the world unafraid. Let yourself be grounded and rooted in God's word. Isaiah 41.10 So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Deuteronomy 31, 8. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Ooh. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. We don't be, want to be kicking and screaming toddlers in a store with their eyes closed and their fingers in the ears. We have to listen to God's promises and take them into our hearts. We have to realize that J- Jesus is both human and divine, holy. Jesus speaks with heavenly authority over us if we listen to his voice, if we tune in. The greatest moment in your life and my life comes when we say from the innermost depths of our being, Jesus Christ, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. I shall listen to you in all that I do. I shall listen to you in all that I do. When you can say that and mean that, you have discovered the pearl of great price. You will have found the buried treasure that you have been searching for. If we humble ourselves, get centered, and truly listen to Jesus, We can grow in grace and love and the things that truly will last. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, help us, lead us. If we but humble ourselves and get centered on you, and fully listen to you, you will have an effect on our lives. And if you have an effect on our lives, you have an effect on others' lives because they will know that we're different. We are centered. We fully listen to our God who calls us beloved, who calls us saved, who calls us his children, who calls us enough. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So children, 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 what about these pictures? Please come forward. Ooh, listen to your heart. 
That's awesome. Yeah? Yes. Oh, and a ring. Listen to your heart. Oh, and the pretty... Oh my gosh, these are so good. Listen to your heart. So, I need my assistant Evie to come. Listen to your heart. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. And so you take these two back to your brother and sister. Whoops. Okay. Any more? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Evie. Listen to your heart. That's so good. Oh. I know, I know. You you helped me at the last church, but I've not made you come forward this church, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so. Good job. Oh, 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 oh. She gets a box of hearts for herself. And these will be out here. So please pick up these lint boxes. They're here and here. And let them be for your own devotions. There is kid stuff in there. There's one poor family. But let it draw you this Lenten season um, to the one who we need to tune into and not block out in our anxiousness and our angst and our apathy. Oof. So please stand and sing. Oh, yeah, lift every voice and sing. Ooh.
Hear not our benediction. May you be rooted and grounded in God's love. May you truly listen to him. And may the peace of God that comprehends all understanding be yours now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.